Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. You know, one of the great rewards of a successful hunt is being able to prepare that wild game and share it with your family and friends. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit that, well, my culinary skills are, uh, well, let's say they lack a little imagination. <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite things to hunt as well as to eat is wild quail. And maybe you've heard by now, but Quail numbers this year are on the rise in Oklahoma. So to maybe kind of help inspire you and, and me as well to kind of step up our game when it comes to our wild game recipes, we're going to introduce you today to Anthony Campani. He's the executive chef and the managing partner of Benvenuti's in Norman. So I grew up in a in hunting um, and, and fishing, angling, and, and environment, and I absolutely enjoy it. I'm at total peace from the chaos of a restaurant when I'm out outdoors, and you know, I found just sitting in the tree stand, hunting is is like the most peaceful place on earth. Whether I'm hunting for a deer or just sitting in the tree stand, um, out with nature, I think is what it's about. It's just getting outdoors and being one, and you know, waking up to that. So today we're gonna to be cooking two quail dishes. Uh, one is a stuffed quail, um, stuffed with uh, homemade Italian sausage, and um, the other one is a quail melanese. So the stuffed, stuffed quail, we usually wrap in bacon and, and grill it or bake it, and sometimes both. Um, I usually stuff it with breadcrumbs and pine nuts, parsley and garlic, usually some sort of currants or you know some dried currants or rosemary and sage. Um, almost like you'd stuff a turkey, really. And then wrap it in bacon. Um, as far as the uh, quail melanese, this is a classic, kind of a, a twist on an Italian classic. So melanese is typically with veal or um, can be pork, or, or but it's, it's usually a breaded and lightly fried dish. It's, it's a really nice little appetizer. So what we're gonna do now is take you back to the kitchen and we're gonna prepare both dishes at the same time and I'm gonna take you through the steps. What we have as far as ingredients goes, about a quarter cup, half a cup of chopped fennel, fresh fennel, quarter cup of onion, um, some hot Italian sausage, a little bit of parsley, um, some bacon, and a little bit of breadcrumbs. So to get started, what we do is we start with a uh, little bit of extra virgin olive oil. We'll let this get nice and warm. We're gonna kind of jump ahead. I've got, uh, for, for our melanase, what I did is, I actually took, uh, took the, uh, the breast, cut them off the, the kill bone, and I like to use 100% of the quail. So what I did is I actually, uh, open this up in here. We took, the, uh, we took all the kill bones and what meat was left, added some garlic, added uh, fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, a little bit of shallot. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of chicken stock to this um, and just kind of continue to reduce this down real slow. Uh, the nice part about this is we're going to get a little bit more flavor out of, out of our uh, quail for our sauce. I love quail. I mean, quail's, quail and duck are two of my favorite along with the white tail, but quail would have to be my favorite. I think it just lends itself to being a great appetizer, in fact, so much that we've put it on the menu here at Benvenuti's. So to this. We're going to add first our fennel. First our fennel, then we're going to add our onion. And we're going to season this with a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And we're going to go ahead and saute this. To this now, I'm going to add our hot Italian sausage. This is our uh, homemade Italian sausage. If you don't have a, a sausage recipe, you can use just a, a hot Italian. And if you don't like hot, you can use a mild Italian sausage. Um, we want, uh, again, just warming it through, cooking the, uh, the shallots. To this, we're going to add about a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, um, a nice pinch of parsley. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, mix this up. 
that breadcrumb is really going to uh, absorb you know, all of the fat and, and uh, any of the oil and liquid and just really capture all that flavor. All right, so to this, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a, uh, in a pan and just let it cool, let it cool off and then we'll finish stuffing our quail. Now we're gonna talk about our quail melanaise. We're gonna go ahead and start uh, the preparation on that. So after you've taken your quail and you, you've taken the, the, the legs off, um, you have the, uh, the kill bone attached. The way to do this is just like you would a turkey or, or a chicken, you're gonna find that kill bone, cut straight down it, and just fillet that right off, real gentle. You should be able to get uh, you know, a nice, the tender and the, uh, the fillet with it right there. Again, we just want to separate that kill bone off. And this is the, uh, the bones that we roasted for the, uh, to make our, our stock. So what we've done is we've taken quail breasts, boneless quail breasts, and pounded them out. We've uh, dusted, dredged them in flour. Um, what I like to do is uh, in our in our breadcrumbs and in our egg, I add a little bit of parsley. Um, I'm gonna season uh, our eggs, season our flour, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in the flour. And then I actually like to add a little bit of garlic, oops, a little bit of garlic and a little bit of uh, Parmigiano Reggiano to the breadcrumbs, just to create a little bit more flavor in there. And, and the cheese really, once it caramelizes in the pan, really uh, adds a great flavor. So to this, I'll also season our quail breast very lightly with uh, sea salt, a little bit of black pepper, then I'm going to uh, go ahead and dredge them in flour. You don't want a whole lot of flour into your egg and then into your breadcrumb. I want to bread one more. All right, so I've breaded four. We'll go ahead and just start with that for now, for the one dish. Now we've got our stuffing, it's, it's uh, nice and cool. Our melanaise is ready. We're gonna take our whole birds and we're gonna stuff them. Um, so now that the stuffing's cooled a little bit, I'm gonna add an a egg. And depending on how much stuffing, if you're using and how big your egg is, I may not use 100% uh, of this egg, maybe like three quarters of it. And it's just to kind of bind everything. And the reason we let it kind of cool off before we add that egg is so we don't add it and scramble it into it. And the egg is really just going to kind of help bind this stuffing once it's uh, in our birds. If, uh, if you have a sausage that has a lot of oil to it, you can, you can drain off some of that oil if you're not wanting it in there. Um, our sausage is, you know, and we're using cooked sausage, so we've actually had the opportunity to take all the oil out before we cooked it. So. What I do now is I'll take my birds, and these are uh, semi-boneless, and we'll just start to stuff them. You want to just compact that real nice in there. You don't want too, too much. You just want enough that it's not going to fall out when you start cooking it. I think, you know, there's no better way than to harvest and, and, and uh, harvest your own game and, and process it. I think that, 
you know, that's the most natural, cleanest way that you could go about, you know, any type of, of protein and meat or, or fish is just, you know, knowing where it came from, taking care of it from, you know, start to finish and, and being able to produce a product at the end of the day that you know the story behind it and you know how you harvest it and you know how, you know, and knowing how to cook it. To finish these, what I'm going to do, I've got some applewood smoked bacon. I'm just going to lay a couple pieces out. When you're doing this, you want kind of a thinner bacon so that it uh, has plenty of time to uh, plenty of time to cook. And what I'll do is, I'll take uh, I'll take the legs, cross them, and I'm going to run a toothpick through the bottom of each leg to cross them and hold them crossed. That'll help. Uh, keep all the, the uh, stuffing in the back. Nice part about this, these can be made a day ahead. Um, you know, you just want to pull them out a little bit ahead of time before you're going to roast them. Let them come back to closer to room temperature. So what I'll do is I'll find the middle of the bird and I'll just actually roll it in the bacon. That just kind of helps, you know, keep it, keep it a little bit moist. Adds another uh, realm of flavor to the bird and uh, helps kind of, uh, keep everything together when we go to roast them. We're going to kind of cross these legs in the back as well, just kind of tucking the legs in to uh, just to kind of hold everything together when we're when we're cooking. All right, so we've got our our quail here ready to roast, and now what we're going to do, we're going to season these with salt and pepper. Both sides. Now we'll get to roasting. Okay, so now um, that our quail are, is prepped and ready to go, we're going to uh, caramelize them in a pan and then roast them in the oven. So go ahead and add a little bit of, uh, um, this is a blend of extra virgin olive oil and canola oil. So we're gonna go ahead and lay these breast side down. So what we're looking to do is caramelize these quail, um, caramelize that bacon, get a nice color on the skin. Um, you're not actually trying to cook them all the way, you're just creating that nice crust to, uh, to brown them before we go into the oven. And we're going to go ahead and put this into the oven at about 375 degrees. There's so many recipes out there that you can follow, but also you know, use your creativity to come up with something that you like. If there's a dish that you make at home that's one of your favorite, try to incorporate the game. That's, that's what I always tell some of my friends is utilize the game the same way you would a chicken. Make your favorite chicken. For our melonets, we're going to start a uh, pan with clarified butter. I like to uh, clarify butter, which is to boil butter and, and uh, take the milk fat out of it. I think the butter just really adds a little bit more depth and a little bit better flavor to it. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, get this started once this uh, butter gets hot. One of my favorite sides to eat with quail is soft polenta. Polenta is, is Italian cornmeal that's uh, cooked with stock and can be made creamy or fried. Really, really something different versus having mashed potatoes. All right, so these are the quail that we breaded earlier. We're just gonna gently place them into the oil, into the butter. So to cook these quail for the melonades, you wanna do moderate, medium to low heat. Um, just enough that it, it fries gentle. Since they're breaded and they're real delicate, you don't want to fry them real fast and hard. You want to just give it enough time to heat them through so you get a nice medium, medium rare um, to the melonets and uh, they come out perfect. So what we have is a little bit of arugula. We're going to add just a little bit of parsley. 
and a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And about a half of a, uh, it's a little bit of a squeeze of a, a fresh lemon. This is gonna be our, our salad that tops this. We'll let that set for a moment. I'm gonna heat up our uh, polenta. And, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check our quail. So our quail are looking nice. Uh, we just want to check the bottom, maybe give them a nice turn. And a couple more minutes and, and they'll be uh, ready to go. We're going to let this rest on this, uh, this pan while we finish plating the rest for our melanage. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our quail out. Um, nice, beautiful color. We're going to go ahead and set these and let them rest as well. The biggest thing and most important thing when you're cooking something like this at home is, again, not to overcook it, but also to uh, let the dish rest. You know, that, the stuffed quail needs to sit after it comes off the grill for at least five minutes um, just to kind of relax and, and everything to kind of come together and the juices to kind of get absorbed into the stuffing. All of these uh, little bit of brown and little bit of bits, this is what we're gonna make our sauce out of. We'll go ahead and let that rest. So now we're gonna plate our quail melanese. To plate this, we've got our creamy polenta. I'm gonna do four nice little dollops of the polenta. I'm gonna arrange our quail. To this, I'm going to take, uh, I've got our salad that we made a little earlier, and I've got some heirloom tomatoes, both red and yellow, that uh, we're gonna finish on top. So with melanaise, you want just a little bit of green, A little bit of your salad. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of our tomato. And to this I have a little bit of uh, shaved Parmigiano Reggiano. And generally, um, that's how we serve it. Finish it with just a little bit of parsley over the top. And there you have it, that says our quail melanay. It's such a uh, unique bird because it has, you don't really get to eat a, a game bird on a medium or medium rare level and still have, it's just a different texture, a different flavor. So now that we've taken our, our uh, quail out of the pan, We've got uh, all this oil. We're going to uh, go ahead and discard this oil. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. To this, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white wine. we're trying to uh, deglaze that pan. I'm gonna add that roasted uh, chicken stock into it. And into this, I'm gonna add just a, a little bit of butter. And we're gonna make what we call a raw roux. So we take a little bit of butter and just kind of uh, roll it in a little bit of flour. That's going to help thicken up that sauce and add a little bit of richness to it. We'll just gently swirl that butter in until we get a nice sauce. We're just making a nice pan sauce. So to that sauce, I'm going to add just a little bit of parsley. Um, 
a little bit of fresh thyme. You can add any uh, fresh herbs that you like. That just kind of gives a little bit of uh, dimension to it. I'm gonna add just a little bit more butter to it and let it loosen up just a little bit. We have our nice creamy polenta. Center plate. I have uh, wilted down some fresh spinach. We're gonna add just a little bit of fresh spinach just to give the uh, quail something to lean up against. I'm gonna go ahead and take the, uh, the toothpicks out. It's important after you uh, pull your quail out of the oven that you uh, let them rest a little bit. That's really gonna give it the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, uh, to hold its shape and, and give it a, a, a chance to rest. I'm gonna just cut this at a nice bias. And this is what we're looking for. A little bit of pink, not much, um, not overcooked. Um, nice and moist, and that stuffing will actually help keep it uh, very moist. I'll go ahead and plate it like that. Come back with our, uh, with our pan sauce that we made. We're just gonna go right over the top. There you have it, roasted and stuffed quail. I hope that this has inspired you to get outdoors and, and you know, even if it's not to fish or hunt, just to get out and be part of the outdoors. Um, and if it has inspired you to get out there and hunt, um, good luck to you. I, I hope you try these dishes and, and you know, if you're an avid cooker or avid, um, or if you like to just dabble, I encourage you to try it with your wild game and, and create new recipes and create new experiences. Hope to see you outdoors. Well, I hope that we've inspired you today to look at your freezer full of wild game and see all the endless possibilities. And once you get a little practice under your belt, well, I've got an opening for a cook at my deer camp. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.